work this uh, career fair. I have to tell you that uh, generally people hate career fairs of all kinds. Uh, you stand around sometimes. I've seen career fairs where people have been lined up for hours, uh, sometimes wrapping around a building. And then, you know, if you're wearing high heels and pantyhose, that's just like no <laughs> you finally get into, into the place and, and you get to the table where, where the company is that you want to go work for, and they say, just go online, all of our jobs are online, just go apply there, you can put your resume in that box. Next. And you're done. It's, I hardly ever have seen anybody who's gotten hired but uh, it depends on sort of what are your expectations as to how successful this can be. So you need to start out, first of all, with, with expectations being realistic. And, and I never really advertise career fairs except this South by Southwest one. Anything you can do for free that has anything to do with South by Southwest, you should take advantage of it, I think, just because uh, I forgot, it was you, sir, that was talking about, the, I think, the energy level in this room oh, yeah. or something like that. It is magnified a hundred times when you are anywhere in South by Southwest. You are surrounded by, I, I just, one time I went to the convention center and I was just in the, in the lobby area that goes around the outside because I didn't have a, I didn't have a wristband or anything like that, I didn't pay any money. And it was electric. People were, were, everybody's on their laptops and their phones and there's poster contact, contests and creative stuff and people with ideas and folks, that, I mean the energy that you, that you absorb by being around that many creative people is, is unbelievable. And if your job search is kind of stagnating, just go get a booster shot by hanging around there. I don't care if you're hanging around with a whole bunch of folks that aren't working. Be hanging around just to kind of uh, see what's going on. The interactive active trade show is the best because there's all kinds of innovative ideas that are, that are being used in the music industry and the film industry and the high tech industry. Uh, so it's fabulous. The uh, South by Southwest attracts companies from all over the world. In fact, the company that sponsors the um, career fairs is a French company. And so uh, lots of people from all over the world come here. And, uh, and so there are, there are job openings I saw in LA. There's uh, quite a few. Uh, there's jobs in New York. But there are lots of uh, local companies that are, that are going to be there as well. So have realistic expectations. I would hope that nobody thinks that you are going to go to a career fair and find a job. Do not be thinking that. That's like saying, I'm going to go to a singles bar and I'm going to get married. <laughs> you may get lucky, but you won't get married. <laughs> so uh, have some realistic expectations. Uh, you can go into the website and pull up, as I did, a list of the current participating companies. Uh, I'll mention some of them. 3M, Accenture, Apple, Athena Health. Uh, I just heard about Athena Health coming, um, I, I believe it's the same company, uh, coming into uh, Launchpad today. There was something talking about the um, electronic medical records and what a fiasco that has been because a lot of the EMR software doesn't speak to other EMR software. and so. Uh, they're having these issues, but Athena has one that is state-of-the-art and it, 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 uh, it will talk to others. And so anyway, I don't know exactly what they're going to be trying to hire, but Athena Health will be there. Austin Technology Council, Bizarre Voice, they finally finished their lawsuit, they're in a hiring mode. Uh, and then uh, a lot of companies that I've never heard of before, Carvana, I haven't heard of, Skill Shadow, I don't know if these are local companies or not, Ericsson will be there. Uh, uh, let's see, yes indeed we'll be there, our good friends, IBM Design, Infusion, that's a, um, oh no, was another one I was thinking of, I'm sorry, Infusion will be there, Intent Media, uh, Luna Data Solutions, that's a staffing company with all kinds of technical uh, job openings, uh, a company called uh, Nelson, 
that's, that's not from here, but it's, I think it's a California company, Phillips Electronics. Anyway, lots and lots of interesting places. So at the very least, you are going to be learning more about various companies. So you'll have a chance to talk to people who work there, find out about the culture, find out about their, their skill needs. If you're thinking of uh, going to school, find out what are the skill sets that, are, that are, people are looking for today. Do you have them? Do you need them? Do you need to go to school? Are you marketable as you are? Uh, you're going to meet company reps. And it's very possible that uh, if you ask for a business card, they'll say, oh, I didn't bring any. Uh, sometimes they'll, you can actually connect with somebody and sometimes not. Having a, a meaningful conversation with somebody uh, at one of those vendor companies is sometimes a little tough. But go with some intelligent questions. I hope that all of you will, um, will research these companies ahead of time and, and uh, the ones that you're really interested in. See what the job postings are, but more than that, see what the companies are doing. Are they, uh, did they just get a new CEO? Are they expanding? Are they contracting? Are they, uh, are they merging with other companies? Does it seem as though they're changing their product line? Does it seem as though they're going in a different direction and that's why they're here? Find out, do some research. Uh, maybe concentrate on half a dozen companies where you'd like to work and then really do some research so that you can ask some intelligent questions. You can have a conversation that's worthwhile and, um, and see if you can actually connect with somebody who's on the other side of that table. You're also going to be connecting with other job seekers. Don't think that because someone is not working, they are not worthy of your connection. Look at the talent that we have in this room. Uh, other job seekers can also be good people to network with. You might meet people that will be full of uh, good information about things that you should do. They'll connect you with other people. Uh, you can form a SWAT team maybe with folks that you meet at, at the career fair. So uh, make, make up your mind, no matter how introverted you are, uh, if you need to get liquored up first before you go to this thing, uh, just so that you can talk to people. No, I'm just teasing. Don't be doing that. I just wanted to see if you were paying attention. But um, maybe set a goal. Um, how many employed people are you going to meet and how many unemployed people are you going to meet? See if you can connect with, with uh, a half a dozen people. Uh, and people that um, look interesting very often are not. People who do not look interesting very often are. So don't let, um, don't let preconceptions uh, cloud uh, the folks that you think you should really be uh, Just. Just soak up South by Southwest. Just walk around and uh, listen to as many different conversations as you can at one time. Just, just, just be a sponge and uh, soak up as much of that energy as you possibly can. I got to tell you that that'll be a, a memory maker. Uh, the uh, career fairs are going to take place Friday and Saturday from 10 to 6, both of them, uh, at the Marriott Hotel. I would assume that uh, unemployed people uh, will show up primarily on Friday and then employed people will show up primarily on Saturday. Uh, I'd I get there as soon as I could. Now, um, that means that you might not be here for lunch bed next week and that's okay. We expect to have a small crowd. <clears throat> I'll be presenting something or another. Anyway, Marriott, second floor. 110 each second if you need to. I suspect that parking is going to be uh, a booger, so think about that. Maybe you want to park somewhere else and take a bus uh, so that you don't have to deal with it. Uh, but plan ahead. Dress appropriately. If, the, if you go into the South Carolina website uh, at, for the expo, uh, and it's, it's on your stuff to do list, but you can also just uh, do South by Southwest. Um, I think I've got the uh, uh, URL here somewhere. Uh, it's got pictures, a few pictures from last year's expo, and you can see that this is really a, a laid back event. Uh, there are going to be lots of young people there, creatives who come here for, for South by, and you know they're not dressing up. I would not wear a suit. Uh, business casual, I think, would be the kind of the way to go. and. Um, and maybe even casual, casual, but not too casual. This is casual. I, I would, I would sure, sure wouldn't wear a suit. Uh, okay. And in order to get in, you have to have a guest wristband, which are free, and you can either uh, obtain one ahead of time by going into Guest Pass at South by South, SXSW.com, 
or you can get one there. They said you can you can just pick one up there if you would like to. <clears throat> and you can check out the participating companies. This is a long uh, URL. I just went into Google and did um, career events or something like that, career expo, and it took me to that that website. Um, <coughs> So those are three companies that I've already list, listed for you. Check the job postings online. And if I were you, uh, if I were you, I would also uh, apply online. If you find a job that's a really good fit, I would adjust the resume, tweak the resume to fit that job. Uh, if you wanted, if this is really something that you want to go after, I think that I would uh, print out a hard copy of that as well. Apply online. Uh, make it a point to, to uh, talk to the representatives, give them a hard copy as well, but you'll have it, they'll have a soft copy, they'll have you in their, in their database, in their system, and so you're applying a couple different ways. If, if there's time for you to uh, go on to LinkedIn, see if you can connect with somebody that works for that company, uh, I think that's all the better. The same as you would for any job, that, job posting that you find. It's, it's just kind of nice to be able to talk to somebody there Maybe you'll get a little bit of additional information. Maybe you'll be able to um, uh, connect with one of those people uh, at the career fair as well. <clears throat> okay, I already told you that. And when you go there, ask a little bit about the culture. See if you can get the name of the hiring manager. Uh, you might say, I looked up the company online and I was very excited about you know this uh, new approach and this and that. Uh, are you able to tell me the name of the, the hiring manager for this particular job? They might tell you that if they know. I don't know. Uh, talk to them a little bit about what is the interview process, how does that work, uh, you know, if, how long is it going to take people to, to process all of the resumes that you're getting at the expo. Uh, at the expo, this is, um, we used to have a, a man named Pete years and years ago who decided that one of the things that he was going to do while he was unemployed was, be, to, was to become an expert on career fairs. He went to every career fair he could find out about, just to kind of play, just to kind of learn how this works. I don't think he was ever very serious about getting a job that way, but he wanted to figure out how do you work them. And I'm gonna tell you what, he, what his research produced. I don't know if this really works. I'm gonna just pass it on. Uh, he's not in a fabulous job, but not here in Pennsylvania or somewhere like that. So he went elsewhere. He would say that he would go First of all, he'd show up at the career fair and he would just reconnoiter. He would just survey the whole place and kind of get a feel for the dynamic. And what he said was, uh, almost every vendor has uh, has two. Oh, thank you, Gordon. Uh, almost every vendor has uh, two people that man the booth, and he said. One is sort of a junior person. That is the person that talks to you and says, put your resume in the box and answers the basic questions. That's not the one you want to talk to. Sometimes there's a line going to that person. Somebody else is standing up on the side. That's the one you want to talk to. That usually is a person that knows a little bit more, a little bit higher level, according to Pete. This is the gospel according to Pete. And so, he would bypass the line and he'd try to just strike up a conversation about the company with Pete, I mean with the, with the, the other person. And, and he'd ask some questions about what he had learned by doing some research on the company. I understand that you're expanding more into the consumer goods uh, uh, area, is that right? That's sort of you know, that's what it appears. And so he'd be talking to that person about the company. That was the person he would try to get a business card from. Uh, eventually, if he wanted to, he'd throw in a resume on the stack, but uh, he would always say that he got the best information, the best connection, and often a business card uh, by talking to that person. I have no idea if that really works. He has followed people into the, into the green room or the room where, where they have refreshments for the, the vendors. He's followed people in there. He's followed people into the restroom. He has followed people everywhere he needed to follow people just to kind of have that conversation. He has done that. I'm just telling you what he said. I'm, this is not an endorsement. It's not a recommendation. I'm just telling you what he said. Uh, when you go 
Make sure that you have some objectives. Uh, for example, what are the companies where you really, really want to want to make sure that that you talk to somebody? Uh, what is the um, uh, what are the questions that you that you want to ask? Have a plan so that you just don't walk in. Uh, there is a a networking guru named Liz Lynch. She's out of New York City. Uh, she's written a lot of publications, blogs, uh, books on networking. And she started, she was uh, in public relations with a, a known company and then she decided to start her own company and all of a sudden after she had done all the work to start her own company, she realized she also had to do her own marketing. And so she uh, went to a meeting of a bunch of uh, high-ranking professionals in order to, to sell her business. And she said she, the first time she went to such a meeting, she was there for five minutes. And four of those minutes were checking in her coat and checking out her coat. And she said she walked into this big room full of professionals and she realized, I didn't know what I was doing there. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was trying to do. I didn't know what I was trying to learn. I didn't know what I was trying to ask. I didn't know to whom I was trying to speak. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared. And so she thought, I need to be better at this before I, I show up and embarrass myself. So uh, then she kind of learned a system. And what she would do is uh, she would have very specific industry reps that she wanted to talk to. And so she'd go to these mixers and she'd uh, be in a conversation with somebody. And she'd say, I'm trying to meet somebody in the environmental industry. Have you talked to anybody like that? And, uh, and if they said, yes, I did, let me go take you to, to them, and that was great. And if they said, no, I haven't, she said, well, let me keep looking then, because that's really what I'm trying to, uh, the kind of people I'm trying to connect with today. But it's been great talking to you. And so she always had a goal in mind, which made her seem not so aimless, made her seem more professional, more focused, more directed, and uh, that was good for her. So, so have some objectives. Uh, whatever you do, learn something. Learn about companies, learn about the industry, learn about a product, learn about another job search uh, venue, learn something. Uh, just uh, come back, just come back smarter than you went when you, when you uh, first showed up there. See if you can get business cards from, from your targeted representatives. And they, frequently they don't like to do that. But if you can, that is great because then it's somebody with whom you can follow up afterwards. Uh, even one good, strong conversation with somebody can uh, be worth uh, more than, than 10 superficial, hi, how are you, can I have a business card, you know, just people that you don't ever connect with. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a numbers thing, it has to, it should, you should work for a, a quality uh, relationship that really actually uh, teaches you something. <clears throat> After the expo, uh, follow up with the reps, with the connections, with the companies, uh, send an email. Uh, I really enjoyed talking with you. I'm sure you don't remember who I am, but uh, let me refresh your memory. This is what we talked about, or this is what I have to offer, or, or you follow up with the company. I, I, uh, I've applied online. I, I talked to your representative at the expo. Now I'd like to know what is the next step. When can I expect to hear from somebody? So see if you can follow up. And even if it's just somebody with whom you're going to start networking, follow up immediately that night. Send them an email, connect with them on LinkedIn, something. Uh, and then sit down and figure out, what did I learn from that? What's my takeaway from this experience? Uh, what are the lessons learned? Was this, uh, was this useful? Go on Friday and go back again on Saturday. Maybe you talk to some of the same people on Saturday and see if you can um, uh, sort of reinforce those initial connections that you made. But you know it's going to be a whole new list of, and a whole new group of job seekers at, at the very least. So maybe going both days, since it's going to be such a, such a rich uh, opportunity for you, I would, I would encourage you to do both of those. Okay, that concludes part one. And uh, I hope that you will all go. I hope that you will learn something. I don't mind if I, if I come here to an empty room uh, on Friday, but I, but I hope that you all get something from that, from that expo. All right. I, I have one uh, top secret thing that I'm going to share with everybody on that. Okay. Well, come up and talk in the microphone so that we go on in our, um, our recording. Tell me 
about who you are, what kind of work you do as well. Okay, sure. um, I'm Pat Sher, and I'm a software as a service product manager, um, generally looking at the senior director level. And um, I'm a self-professed, just barely introvert, um, who doesn't particularly like those types of uh, events. However, um, beyond the fact that I've also studied how to make use of them by doing a lot of preparation, which is a totally introverted thing to do, I found that one of the coolest things to do, and it just, it, it's totally changed um, my experience, is to um, team up with somebody, particularly if you can team up with an extrovert, because and make sure that that person knows exactly what you do, because then you can be looking for them and they can be looking for you. And uh, you'll find that, uh, you know, it kind of uh, encourages you and also that uh, it's a lot easier to, um, to uh, brag up somebody else, I found. Uh, and um, it just tends to be more productive. And that works for almost everything. Uh, any kind of a, a group that you go to. You have somebody who loves to talk, who loves to do all of that, and once they've got that little connection started, then they'll say, oh, and my friend who is so good at this, and then they, they'll kind of market you. So uh, you need to connect in both directions, but that's great. All right. That's a wingman, absolutely. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Now. Let me do it with the pad. Just close. Two. There you go.
And he said, this kid is extraordinary. He said, I want to be him. I want to work for him. Uh, and, and he said, and he gave me his business card. So some of you know that um, when we talk about business cards, Moo cards, Moo.com, uh, I like Moo cards a lot. One of the um, distinguishing uh, aspects of Moo cards is that you can get an unlimited number of different cards. And so lots of photographers like to use Moo cards because they can put a different photo on each card. Uh, they're also coated with a special plastic front and back, and you can write on that plastic. So it, it protects the cards, it keeps them strong and sturdy, and yet you can write on it. So that's all cool. So uh, lots of, I have lots of clients who have half cards, little strips of business cards, and with different pictures on all of them. So uh, this kid has a number of half cards, and each one has a different motivational uh, little, little uh, slogan or maxim on it. And he talks to people for five minutes or so, and then he decides based on that conversation which one of those cards he wants to bestow upon you. And so I looked him up, and uh, come to find out his name is Jax, J-A-X, and his last name is Cadell. And I thought, hmm, our speaker on April 3rd is named Cadell. Isn't that a, a, a strange coincidence? And Mark Cadell was a speaker in Launchpad years and years ago. I think he spoke twice, and he's always been great. And, um, and so I had already reached out to Mark and said, hey, you want to be a speaker again? And he said, oh, yeah, I'd like to. And he said, I can talk about any of these three topics. And each one was fleshed out with a funny, interesting little blurb already. And I said, oh, can you do all three? Could we have a, Cadell, a Mark Cadell binge and you do every Friday for three weeks? Could you? Because they're all so good. Or would you rather put some time in between? So he has. Um, he said he put some time in between. So he's our speaker on April third. He's our speaker sometime in July and sometime in October. But we are all. Gonna, I want everybody here for that because there's, it sounded so cool. So his uh, talk that he's going to do on on April third is um, is on story time. And it's going to be very interactive. He wants, he wants all of you to bring job, uh, uh, jobs that you're looking for, turn them into him ahead of time. He's going to you know, fit his presentation to that. But anyway, so cool. So I told him I also wanted Jax to speak. And he said, uh, and I was kind of kidding and kind of not. And he wrote back and he said, oh, Jax is so excited. He would love to speak to your group. And he said, so we're working on some topics that would be appropriate and useful. So we're going to have a speaker at some point who's eight years old. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're going to be taking notes. OK, what can you learn from an eight-year-old? So here's Jax Cadell. OK, so uh, he's, he doesn't really have an impairment. That's, that's the opening to one of his videos that he did on his, on his uh, website, on his blog. And this particular one, which we're not going to show you, but it was all about, it was, it's for, his website is called uh, Boy Gone Healthy. And this particular episode was about kids who stayed focused on video games so long that uh, it, it ruined, it's not good for them. And so this was his, I'm zoned out from looking at video games so such a long time. And so Boy Gone Healthy is the name of his website. Um, and how can you apply this to your job search? I think now is when we're going to look at the video. I chose the shortest one. He's got five or something like that that, that you can, they're, they're four or five minutes each. But I chose the shortest one just to give you a flavor of, of his website. So this one is called something like Get Fit. Is there anything that you can think of from this example that you could apply to your job search? Not so much the, the although everybody should be trying to be healthy, I don't mean that, but just about Jack's, who he is, what he does, anything that you could apply to your job search? Enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. The kid's having a ball. So much fun. Everybody needs to be having fun. Uh, it energizes your job search. Gordon? 
very goal oriented. Uh, and he, I don't, I'm not sure how often he does these. Um, I don't know if he does them once a week. There are five of them on there right now. He's got one about how to avoid um, uh, puberty skin. Uh, he's got one. <laughs> he's got one about um, uh, about the the video stuff. He's got an exercise thing. He's got I can't oh, how to eat an entire apple and, and what what benefits an apple can do for you. Anyway, a whole bunch of stuff like that. Uh, what else about him that you can find your job search? Yes, ma'am. Well, he um, asked for feedback. He said, are we doing this? Have you learned about different features on the system? And so let us know what you think. Okay. Um, and he's very interactive. He's very interactive. He asks for feedback. What are you doing? And so, and, and because he's a little kid right there, it makes you, I immediately went in and told him what I do. Uh, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, I can let me share what I've got. It's better, the fact that it's a video, it, it helps. And looking for a job, I tell you all the time, it's too scary to do by yourself. You want to learn from other people what works for you. I appreciate what Pat said. I appreciate what he said about these are techniques that I use that are good for me. Save you some money. Uh, make the thing easier. And that's what everybody ought to be doing. We all be sharing information. What else can you learn from Jax? Yes, sir. Digital presence. Digital presence. He uses technology to market himself. He uses technology to market himself. Uh, everybody in here, I think, should have a website or some kind of an online presence. And when you put a video with it, uh, your search engine optimization score goes it's something like seven times more. Uh, and creating little videos, uh, his isn't slick, but it's cool. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy, but when you have a, a video, uh, it helps us identify you. What else does he do? That's right, and he does that a lot. I'm sure he doesn't get any money for that, but at the, um, uh, he's talking about this particular device, how good it is for him, and I've noticed that other people in, in their feedback uh, talk about other devices, or what I threw in was a free one uh, that does a lot of the same things, and it's free. And so, um, so you, you, it's all about sharing information, uh, sharing information for everything. So uh, there are lots and lots of different things that he does. So here's, here's something I thought about uh, that help use technology to market yourself. Thank you for bringing that up too. Uh, experiment. Try different things. Uh, one of the things that, that we encourage you to do, this might be my third one, I hope. No. Get help from others. We talked to you about that. Uh, everybody should, should be thinking about how can you engage as many people as possible in your job search. Don't make this be a solitary uh, exercise. Create a reputation as an expert in your field. And uh, we have a section on this in your handbook. This was advice that one of our speakers gave us, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that. that and we've had people that have done this very successfully. Whether you start a blog uh, and you, um, you begin to curate uh, articles and things in your career field. That's one of the things Mark Miller did. Mark Miller is a board member who has, uh, he was our speaker last week. He, uh, he has done all kinds of things to create a reputation as an, as an expert in his new field. He wrote a book, he has a blog, his blog was, his uh, website was named one of the 100 best career related websites uh, according to Forbes, um, the Forbes magazine people. Uh, maybe make speeches. Uh, and you, sh you make presentations, people see uh, that you are knowledgeable about a certain area. And so uh, creating a reputation as an expert in your field is a very, very important part of the job search process. Um, there's another page. Uh, anyone can be creative and anyone can be innovative. Uh, just think about it a little bit. How are you going to market yourself in a unique way? If an eight-year-old can do it, you guys can do it. It doesn't have to be slick. Help others. Uh, I've told you many times about Scott Killen, one of my favorite job search people, who the third time he was unemployed said that what, what made the third time so much more fun and so much more effective was instead of looking for a job for himself, he decided to see how many other people he could help find jobs, which is exactly what uh, you said. Yes, that's exactly what you said. Uh, connect with me, I'll help you, I'll help you. Uh, it changes the whole focus of your job search. 
and makes makes you know most people come up here and say help me help me can anybody help me no how can I help you and that really it empowers you when you have that attitude uh, everybody should have business cards I know you don't have them and then take care of yourself be healthy be fit uh, be happy have fun and that's enough oh yeah I have that on there. okay so uh, anyway, I hope you'll all go subscribe to Boy Gone Healthy. He's going to wonder what in the world happened if he gets 100 more people that uh, overnight have subscribed to his site. But it's very cool, and I can't wait for him to be a speaker. You're, you're, and you're going to love it when his dad comes to talk to you. It's going to be fun, fun, fun.